Hi everybody, this is Nelson Everhart. Welcome back to the musical tour of The Spiral, where we take a favorite track from each world in Wizard 101 and Empire 101 and try and determine exactly what makes it tick. So I've actually been sitting on this track for a while. I, I had to get it out and redo it for undisclosed reasons and it was driving me nuts for a while because I, I could have sworn that I released this video already because I had already re remixed it and felt like I had posted it, but uh, as it turns out, I haven't. So this is Crocotopia the second world in the spiral so this is a, a very early track and once again i did have to uh, redo a lot of sounds that i either don't have anymore or i just couldn't stand anymore this is the third track from crocotopia it didn't have a particular uh, part of the world that it was originally intended to go with the developers just asked for you know a few tracks in the style and i wrote them and they figured out where they I uh, would best go. But before I give too much away, I want to get right to the track. So here it is. And there is the loop. So I didn't have too much to go on uh, at this early point in the game's development. I didn't even have a uh, way to run around the world. I did have an account on the early alpha server, but I didn't have any way to, to kind of warp around the world and it would have been too time consuming to get actually onto Krakatopia legitimately. So I, I hadn't even really seen the world other than maybe a couple screenshots. So usually when people say desert, stuff there, there's a lot of kind of film film and tv music and, and reference it's it's it tends to get all lumped into one pile of uh lawrence of arabia so i knew i was going to use the byzantine scale <sighs> byzantine yeah that's what i thought so i knew i was going to be using the byzantine scale and some harmony derived from that the byzantine scale is kind of a harmonic major scale it's got some weird uh notes in it the second degree and the sixth degree are flatted which makes for a couple uh minor third intervals so the jump between the second and the third degree it's kind of weird because that's the second degree, the flat two, the, the D flat is kind of got a darker sound, but then you, the third degree of the scale is a major sound, kind of a lighter feel. So it's got kind of an exotic flavor and then it's the same thing kind of up top. And 
very, very, very stereotypical sounds, but also very kind of effective and a good shorthand to get to kind of the root of what makes, you know, the desert sound like the desert as far as our brains have been trained from watching millions of hours of, of uh, television. Let's take a look at the uh, mix page of my Pro Tools session here. You can see all of uh, these instruments. This is me just trying to remember uh, what patches <laughs> patches I used and I had to go in to some old libraries. Right off the top it's just kind of scene setting here. So definitely, you know, some sharp notes in there that are, that are making it sound a little, you know, very, very human played. Uh, so here's the Caval, which came with the original Contact Factory uh, library of sounds. And I found they haven't aged super well. So I bought a couple instruments, uh, the India Discovery Series from Native Instruments and also the uh, Discovery Series Middle East. And I wound up using those for some of the ethnic string and wind sounds uh, that I replaced some of my older sounds with. So after the uh, Ney, which is I think a Persian instrument, the cello takes over the melody here. And this is my LA scoring strings, uh, cello solo. Uh, really good library for uh, legato. And the the softer you hit the keys, uh, the, the 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 longer the kind of glide between two notes. If I have especially a melody that I present, uh, if I'm presenting it again, you're just trying to add some new ideas. So I like to add some answering phrases in a different instrument. So here the cello is taking over the main melody, and the horns are kind of filling in the gap. Provide a little more context about the harmony that's going on. New bassoon, this is a Cine Samples, Cine Winds. I, I keep saying it, but just some really super inspiring sounds that, that help me write some of these lines. It's not even just good sounds. I find myself experimenting and playing with it and then going, oh, that's a really good line. This might have been the, the genesis of the uh, Wizard 101 theme because I don't believe I composed the theme until after I'd, I had written for a lot of the levels. So this line here. <laughs> wish I could say for sure, but it was a long time ago, uh, 2007. So I, I know I go on a lot about uh, older libraries that I have and the sound's not, not cutting it. Uh, right here is an example of a really, really good sound that, that wound up working well. This is from Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra, and I have the, the, have the silver. And this particular sound is a, meant to be a solo violin. And it sounds so nice uh, that I wound up using it for chords right here. Really, really nice vibrato there. And maybe not super real uh, on that solo line, but it's behind, you know, a million other things. And when you get a sound, you have to mess around with it and find out what it's good at. Sometimes it wouldn't be the first thing I tried it, you know, a chord with a sound that has solo in the title. Uh, but it worked here. All right, this next section after the, the flowery Wizard 101 magical feels is a section that actually had a lot of trouble reproducing. I did this so long ago. It was on, it was, you know, two computers ago and five hard drives ago and maybe two studios ago. I had libraries that I just forgot, you know, where the sounds were. And for some reason, the audio of this tabla loop that I was using didn't save with the session. I'm not sure what's up with that, but I had to reproduce it. I, I went through every tabla library I own and some I don't, I went online and I'm Googling the, you know, the name of the loop, hoping it comes up in documentation somewhere. And I could not find the loop anywhere. So I had to reproduce it. Tabla can be a very busy instrument uh, that players can play with a lot of different fingers. So I wound up 
of focusing on three different elements of the tabla loop the the click sound there's a you know thumpy kind of open hand sound and then another like uh, sound where you're hitting it on the rim of the drum with your fingers i have some tablas and i'm trying to learn how to play them but it's slow going so here's what i managed to reproduce And that's as close I could get with the the sounds that I have. I think it, it works pretty good in context. I hope you can forgive me. I couldn't resist putting this one little uh, just answering shot at the end of one of the phrases. It's it's all new, but I felt like it belonged there. Yeah, I just wanted to add something new in there and it felt right. One of the instruments that I think helped uh, pull this into the original Wizard City tunes was this uh, Celeste track. At the time, I was thinking that the, the Celeste would be kind of the, the through line of everything, the, the through instrument, the instrument that tied all of the different worlds together. And I did use it a lot when I was originally kind of pulling some instruments together and messing with some ideas. This Celeste was kind of the one that just said magic and, and wizards. So again, this is from uh, Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra Silver, and it's just quite evocative. Like you can really hear the hall that it was recorded in. It sounds, you know, like a sound stage. just immediately kind of pulls you in and, and tells you where you are. And, and it's not a Middle Eastern instrument, but it winds up working really well in context. Another instrument that I wound up using a lot of because of its kind of magical sound uh, is the, the harp here. And this is Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra again. I've actually had trouble uh, replacing this particular sound. I've, I've tried another couple harp libraries. Uh, I might need to spend more money. The way you play the harp is sort of fundamentally different than the way you play a lot of instruments, except maybe the piano, but the, the flourishes and the glissandos are, are part and parcel of, you know, what, what the harp does really well. Uh, here it's playing triplet eighth note arpeggios. And then double in the melody there. And then... sort of outlining the chords there and doing the like I mean that's not played well <laughs> and yet in context I think it it really helps everything else just sound a lot more polished I've used that all over the Wizard 101 stuff I've gotten away from it uh, lately, but even hearing it again now makes me want to use it again and, and find some new things for it to do. Very flexible. It's got all the flexibility of a piano, but in some ways, a lot of the glissandos and other ornaments are, are easier for it to achieve because you just run your hand up and down. Hey, don't think I have anything else to add there. Hope that was uh, interesting to everybody. I promise myself every time I'm not going to say it, but go ahead and hit the like and subscribe if you care to. Please tell anybody else who might be interested about this video series and I'll keep making these for you. We're getting close to the end of the spiral here, but still have some of my favorite tracks from the game coming up. Maybe a surprise or two thrown in for good measure. Thanks everybody. See you next time.